Well, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Vivian Spiro, Chairman of the Board of Directors and Associates, and I want to welcome you all to this, our annual meeting and 100-year retroactive book award competition. I have to confess, though, that <clears throat> like all of you, I'm suffering from a case of collective false consciousness. By that, I mean that we came here under the illusion that by somehow voting, we would decide which books published in 1909 merit a place in the canon of classics. So thank you, panelists, for uh, engaging in this scrum. And we'd like to begin with Gertrude Stein and the Three Lives. Yeah. Thank you very much. It seems that, um, that now we have an excellent idea for next year, that a retroactive award for the most obscene work written in the Bastille in 1789. It sounds like it um, will be a, a tight race. Um, on my way over, I thought uh, about um, something that I hadn't thought about beforehand, which was that, uh, first and foremost, I'm here as an advocate of, of Gertrude Stein, and as all advocates, I want um, her to win, or I want the person that I'm representing to win. Uh, the Village Explainer. Excellent if you were a village. If not, not. <laughs> um, so, sniping aside. Um, those of you who have just one of Gertrude Stein's phrases ringing in your ears are likely to have the echoing a rose is a rose is a rose. This most famous of her remarks nicely introduces all that is strangely entrancing and all that is entrancingly strange about three lives. When asked about this remark, she said, now listen, I'm no fool. I know that in daily life we don't go around saying is a, is a, is a. Yes, I'm no fool. But I think that in that line, the rose is read for the first time in English poetry for 100 years. Ezra Pound's book of poems, Personae, which he published, as we know, in 1909, uh, was his third book. Um, and he was 24 years old at the time with flaming red hair. He was trying to take literary London by storm. And the book was considerably successful, published by the small publisher Elkin Matthews. If it didn't take it by storm, maybe he got a lot of good reviews. He, he became, in some sense, notorious and was able to meet William Butler Yeats and other eminences. So the book accomplished, in some sense, socially what he wanted it to. Um, he became a literary arriviste in London at 24. Um, Pound at 24 was not yet the anti-Semitic maniac and apologist for Mussolini. He would become in the 1930s. He was a young man absolutely passionate about Greek poetry, Latin poetry, Provençal poetry, Dante and Dante's friends of the Dolce di Novo, French Renaissance poetry, and he was completely nourished by this work of the past. I, I, I do think it's somewhat unsporting to, to, to be defending essentially the entire Western canon leading up to 1909 <laughs> against two admittedly very, very good books from 1909. And it occurred to me that perhaps um, my, my real uh, challenge to the candidacy could be a kind of birther's movement. Um, that we could have the literary equivalent of scouring of Hawaiian hospital records in order to disqualify the Harvard <laughs> classics from the running. Uh, Collier's profited tremendously from this set, uh, but Eliot was himself given just a small honorarium, um, barely enough to compensate him for the work of uh, compiling, and certainly nothing to pay for the legitimacy that his name being attached to the set provided. Uh, Likewise, the seal of Harvard, in addition to the name, was stamped on every volume for which Harvard, as an institution, received nothing. This is perhaps the most shocking thing about the Harvard <laughs> classics from 100 years hence. Uh, it was in part the classics that made people realize that names, whether they are the names of people or the names of institutions of higher learning, are proprietary brands. Thank you, Bob, for such an able job of moderating this literary punch-up, really. <laughs> And many thanks to our panelists for devoting the time and energy and good 
gratitude <laughs> <laughs> to this enterprise. <laughs> You've seen them in person, now you can see them in print, here, for free, in the library, as well as in your local bookstores, and if they deign to stay on, perhaps you can sort of uh, corner them over there by the table where we do have some wine and cheese. Please, all of you, join us in our fight to keep the library's special collections going. I hope that you will join the associates if you're not already members. And if you're not a great joiner, I hope you'll find some way to help us out so that we can keep our conservation of the library's treasures and other programs going. Thank you all for coming, and we'll see you soon. And thank you all again. Marvelous job.